The Dutch Caribbean Nature Alliance is a regional network between the six islands of Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao, St. Eustatia, Ceiba, and St. Martin. Together we work to preserve our unique nature. In this episode of Safeguarding Nature Projects, I will visit five special projects. Here we will meet people who have been in the recent years busy with maintenance, conservation, management, and sustainable use of our nature on Stacia. These projects of the public entity of Stacia, in collaboration with the local organizations, has been funded by the Ministry of Agriculture, Nature, and Food Quality. In this episode, we will look at the results and the importance of these projects for the island. Here we are in this beautiful environment. Um, this morning we were fortunate to visit one of your projects um, in the school. Can you say, tell us something about that? Yeah, that component is uh, an education component uh, where we had some lesson boxes created on different topics. And this morning we went to the Seventh-day Adventist school where we taught the children about shells and um, they learned how to recognize different shapes and sort them into uh, the textures and so on. Mm -hmm. So for, so the boxes are developed with uh, lessons from very, very young right up to high school level. So even within just the single lesson box, you have a number of different lessons that can be used for different age groups. Okay. Yes. And are there any other projects outside schools for, like, for the general public? Yes, we've done a number of different projects. We've done uh, different workshops, for example, invasive species, uh, economic value of nature, a whole variety of projects. So we're trying to get the relevant stakeholders of the island involved, participating, and hopefully the knowledge that they gain will then be translated into policy at a uh, government level. Okay. Well, I've noticed you're very enthusiastic about it. Um, why do you think it's important for the general population to be aware of the environment? Um, well, personally, uh, I'm a terrestrial ecologist, so I, I love being outdoors and I love being in, in the forest. This is one of my favorite places to be. Um, but for the, for the public of Stacia, in 2014, there was a study done uh, about the economic value of nature on mm -hmm. Stacia. And the conclusion was that uh, the value of, the, uh, of nature on the island was $25 million per year. So we need to try to find a way to, um, to let people find the link between nature, the value of nature and economic prosperity. Okay. We hope that uh, tourism will increase, uh, sustainable tourism mm -hmm. will increase, so not just uh, unregulated development, but we hope that uh, the island will develop in a sustainable way so that um, we can have a balance between the uh, growth of the island, but also with the protection of the nature. Yeah, that's great. Tell us about the coral restoration project. Okay, well, it started because all of the Caribbean reefs are very much degraded. So we were lucky enough to get funding to restore ours. And we chose two species, the staghorn and the elkhorn coral, because they grow fast and they're really the foundation of the reefs. After the hurricane, there are still fragments that are still alive, but you can, if you get them fast enough, you can use them. So then you would take them before they die, obviously, and plant them out in a nursery to let them recover a bit. And when they're big enough, then we can plant them out on the reef. And then what's the nursery? 
Well, that's a structure that we make with rope and pipe. And yeah, we just hang them there. It's really a nursery. <laughs> you put them in there to grow and get bigger, but you have to maintain it. So um, what are they actually doing under there? So this is maintenance. As you can see, there's a lot of algae on the mm -hmm. rope and on the fishing line that they're attached with. So that algae has to come off before it uh, grows over the coral and smothers it. And you use a toothbrush? <laughs> we use our hands, we use a toothbrush, yeah. So right now he's cleaning the fragments. These are the fragments we were talking about. And you see now they're about 10 centimeters, a little bit longer and they can be planted out. And then of course we have to go back and clean around it, make sure the rock is clean of algae, just like how we're doing here. So you glue it? We glue it with marine epoxy. people of Stasia benefit from this project? Well, that's a good question because even if you never set foot in the water, people can't swim or whatever. It's very important for Stasia to have a healthy reef system because healthy reefs mean a healthy fish population and that benefits the fishermen, it benefits the dive, the dive shops because divers come to see our beautiful reefs. Mm -hmm. The swimmers, it's, it's just good for everybody. Good reefs, even during a hurricane, can help take up some of the wave energy, for example. There's so much that coral oh, reefs are good for. Oh, I was not aware of that. Yes. Oh, that's that's important yes, information. Yes, coral reefs are just beneficial for the whole island. Okay, and they're, and they're beautiful. Ah, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> We visited some farms this morning. Um, you're responsible for the roaming animals on the island. Tell us about this project. Well, we've been working on this project for quite some time. It's because animals have been roaming on Stacia for over 40 years, and they've contributed to a lot of damage to the environment. Um, I love my island, Stacia. I love nature. And if we can let the animals continue to roam, it will change the whole habitat of the island. And this is why the reason we started. We first started actually with tranquilizing these animals and putting them in pens, but after a while, because it seems like it became uh, natural, uh, it become, became common law that these animals roam, the people cut the fence and let the animals out. What are the main issues that you encounter with the animals being free? We encountered that uh, our topsoil is being washed into the sea. We encountered that the animals are breaking down people's fences, people that want to plant, do a little backyard gardening. No plants are, are being able to grow. We lost a lot of plants on the island. Nothing can grow with the animals roaming free. We need to work towards a sustainable station. It is important that we, as a small island, can feed ourselves. And how can we do that? Working towards sustainable agriculture. Uh, we visited some farms. How are the farms managed? Okay, uh, I want to start by saying that our department, uh, the department of LVV, we made sure that there's enough fencing, there's enough poles, there's enough food. And these farms that 
are there, they, have, they buy also their supplementary food for the animals. Okay. Um, we would like that some of the farms that we just visited, that the majority of the farmers on Stacia work towards that. What is your idea of a model farm? A model farm is a farm where the farmer is managing his flock in the sense that he has his flock fenced in, he has his animals tagged that is required by law, and his animals are not roaming. He makes sure there's sufficient water and sufficient food. And he can have a combination of animals on the same farm. Like we just saw a farm with, there's chickens, there's ducks, there's goat, there's sheep, and there's pigs. So we are setting up two line of ponds, and from these ponds, there will be water, and we are activating a few wells on the island that there's sufficient water. So there won't be any reason why farmers cannot work according to these model farms. That was a very great adventure. Um, what did we actually see on the trail? So first we stopped at a point where we had placed a tracking tunnel. Uh, this is a, a, a card, it has ink in the middle and we bait it with peanut butter to attract rodents. And uh, in this way we're able to measure whether there are any rodents or other animals that come and leave their footprints on the car. Okay, that's interesting. And then uh, we saw this box, uh, what was that for? Yeah, the box is, is a bait station. It's uh, basically uh, a box with holes. Uh, the rats go inside. You have poison blocks within the box, so nothing else can go inside. So it prevents us from killing any non-target species. Okay. Okay, and now to my favorite part. Tell us, <laughs> tell us, is the bird going to be okay? Yeah, the bird is going to be absolutely fine. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. yes, okay. they're very uh, tough species. And I've been doing this since 2012, so um, we know what we're doing. Basically, we extracted the adult from the nest. Uh, we removed the egg, so um, we could... Uh, basically, we're measuring the, the success of, of the nest of this species. So, uh, is the egg going to hatch? And if the egg hatches, will the chick fledge? That's basically the, the goal of the project. Okay, and, and how often do they, uh, do they nest? They nest once a year wow. and they only lay one egg per wow, year. Wow, that's very special. Yes. Yeah. So, the tropic bird has existed on this island you know, for thousands of years. Whereas rats were introduced a few hundred years ago. So what happened was the rat came in, they devour everything in their wake. And uh, so that has a negative consequence for the native species that just haven't adapted and they haven't evolved with rats. Teresa, we're here uh, at this location. Um, can you explain what the highlights of your project is? Well, I brought you here to show you um, that in Stacia we have a lot of abandoned properties. The, my, the project I have is rat control and um, in urban areas from more of a public health perspective because rats cause carry diseases. And when you have properties like this that have been abandoned, these become places where that can harbor rats but other vectors as well. Okay and why is this project uh, important for well, the island? I mean all over the world you're seeing increases in rat populations. You do not want rats coming through your house. They spread disease, they um, um, hamper biodiversity, they destroy property mm -hmm. and if you want to develop agriculture they'll destroy that too. So it is something rats on the island need to be managed. Can you explain what you actually do? Well, what we're doing is we're looking at methods, different methods of rat control. 
Um, so we're, try we're trying um, baiting techniques. We also have something with, with A24 traps and working with the community to find the best methods to control rats. And after we're done, this information gets turned over to the public health department so that they know they're up to date on what they can do to control rats on the island. And what would you advise someone like me living in an urban area? Mm -hmm. What can I do to control uh, rat growth? Well, I mean, rats are going to survive. That's the thing. But what you can do to keep them away from you is to um, keep your yard clean, try not to throw food outside, um, and pr that's, do your part to keep your area clean. But then again, if your neighbor's not doing that, it could, it could impact you. So it has to be a community effort. Okay. Tell me, how is the reforestation program going? Oh, well, we are actually on our way right now where um, we just received our container over at the property. Um, Adam is busy with the fencing right now, so... Okay. Why you need to fence? Well, we are fencing off our property besides the plants that we're going to be planting to fence off from the roaming animals. We have a serious problem on the island with roaming animals, so our trees can grow, our saplings can grow a certain height and then you know, the animals wouldn't be able to get at them after they are already a certain height. Okay. And then down here, we have more grape trees here. And then here we have some guavas. This is guava? Yes, this is guava. Here okay. we have the July tree we're going to be using. Mm -hmm. How much These trees seeds here pick in my yard, actually. The school children went out to pick these. Um, the maiden station did a good job. They help us. Oh, these are really getting some yeah, for these us. Are a lot so nice. These have to go out. I could take one of the leaves as well. Yeah. Why is it important? The okay, station? over the hurricane from 2017, we lost a good bit of amount of trees, like 250 trees in total. Mm, that's a lot. So we are actually doing the work of putting the trees back on the island we are also suffering from erosion. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the Glasgow area, we have a serious erosion problem going on there. So, and that is what happening around our coast as well. So the project really is like a save a life project really for Stacia and for those who really say they love it, you know, so, um, yeah, it, it, we also have to educate our children on the importance of really taking care of what we have because if we don't take care of it now, next 10, 15 years from now, we basically wouldn't have nothing, it's just a withered island. We have different things in place where the community will be involved. That's good. So, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's needed. Yeah. All right, that's a nice explanation. All right, thank you. So we've come to the end of the program. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. As you've seen, working together has really made a difference for these programs when it comes down to the restoration of the nature of this island. What really made a difference is the compassion, the knowledge and the dedication that has been put into all of these individual projects. And we really do hope that not only us, but the future generation will enjoy and learn to appreciate uh, the uniqueness of all these beautiful islands of Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao, Stacia, Seba and St. Martin. Um, thank you very much for watching and we do hope to see you next time. <laughs>